Reverend John Flynn, in uh, his early days, developed the thought that aviation could be the avenue to deliver healthcare to rural and remote Australians. I call him a radical in many ways. He believed that by improving the healthcare of rural and remote Australians, that he actually could then help in the development of communities. And so this visionary individual, nearly 100 years ago, developed what essentially is the Royal Flying Doctor Service today. In May 1928, the first flight uh, in an aircraft called Victory with Arthur Affleck, who was the pilot, and Dr. Welsh flew from Cloncurry to Julia Creek. And that, in essence, developed the whole idea and service, that is, the Royal Flying Doctor Service. In that first year operation, the RFDS saw 255 patients. Today, we see over 290,000 patients in a year. We just went back there to have a bit of a look at it all, see if we could see see any marks or anything and check it all out. The helicopter itself was burnt out completely, so yeah. We'd been mustering some cattle that morning and I was flying the helicopter. The helicopter started to, to cough and splutter, uh, which was a bit nerve wracking. It eventually cut right out, so I did an emergency landing and then the helicopter rolled over. And then when it rolled over, it, it exploded. We went up to the house and tried to call him on the two-way and there was no answer and um, we immediately were very concerned. I knew my brother was eventually going to come back because he he was helping me muster the paddock and Dad was probably five minutes behind him in the, in the Toyota and came and, and just sort of sat with me until the, the ambulance arrived. I was concerned that he wasn't going to go to and live, you know. Uh, you'd think that I'd be right by now about it, but uh, it's still, yeah, it's still an issue for me. Mm. Mm. When we arrived at Orgothella, the RFDS guys were there waiting. We met them at the Orgothella hospital where they had to stabilise me before I flew. If it hadn't been for the flying doctor, so I don't believe he would have survived. And it was pretty reassuring to to see him heading off with uh, people that knew what they were doing. I know when uh, Dr Ellis was flying me down in the RFDS plane, he said that a few times uh, my organs started to try and shut down and stuff. So I was probably on the edge of, of, um, of death, really, yeah. I think the wedding for us, we knew he was moving on and getting on with life. Everything's moving along pretty well. Like we've bought a little place now and got a family going and life's good. The RFDS uh, are the lifeblood of, of a lot of the communities. Well, they saved my life, so I got home everything really. Yeah. We're at Gilberton Station in far north Queensland. It's a historical station, so we've now got seven generations on the station. We've utilised the Flying Doctor many times over the seven generations, I guess, as long as back as the Flying Doctor's ever been going. My mother used to say, God help me if the Flying Doctor ever stopped. And I never understood it until you had kids and grandkids, but I fully understand now, you know, just how important they really are. It was certainly 
a lifesaver for us on a number of occasions. Knowing that they're only at the other end of the phone, they're only a phone call away, and having the medical chest that the flying doctor supplies us with, the fact that we are so far from civilisation and the fact that you can just get on the phone and talk to the doctor and know that that medication is in that box and that you don't have to go anywhere like six or seven hours drive just to get a medication is really important. The Royal Flying Dots Field Day program visits remote areas of far north Queensland and it provides people living in those remote communities and outback stations with the opportunity to get health information, learn new skills around health and also to access a, a clinical service, so a doctor. We usually go out to cattle stations. We invite the neighbours from all the surrounding region. We bring a range of health professionals with us. We bring a doctor, a nurse, a mental health professional, myself as a health promotion officer and any other extra guest speakers that we might want to have. When we have a field day, people do come together and it's a great opportunity for them to, to keep those wonderful connections. In rural remote communities, it's just not as easy as going around the corner to see your local GP for a problem. So RFDS definitely brings the service to people where they don't have to drive four or five hours. The range of, of people that we see is huge. We deal with a couple of hours old, right up to the palliative care settings. So we deal from, you know, birth to death. As you can imagine, if we're dealing from zero to 100, you also get that full range of medical things. So everything you can ever imagine, we've probably come across at some stage. Everyone likes to know their doctor and gets to trust them. And so part of what RFDS tries to do is that if there is a regular clinic in a town, that the same doctor goes back every week or at least every fortnight. And over the course of sort of two or three or even six months, people get to know when the doctor comes because it's a regular clinic. They get to know who's going to be there. It enables the community to have some stability. And that's really, really important in health. We look forward to the visit of the doctor. Every Monday we feel very confident and relaxed about it. As soon as you sit down in there, you know what's going on and they know you and, and all that sort of thing. I had a heart attack here a few years ago and um, I drove down here, I don't know how I done it, but I fell in through the gate. The nurse came straight down me and got me straight away and straight onto the flying doctor. That flying doctor here was no time and had me out there in Cairns. It was fantastic. I, I got 10 out of 10 for them. They're just magic to me. Mm. I really love the type of people I get to work with. Rural folk tend to be interesting characters who are also very stubborn and strong all at once. They're wonderful people. I remember doing a, just a health check on a, a teenage lad. It was just a normal health assessment. There was nothing that had stood out at all and I went oh let's just feel your belly I went oh my gosh what's going on with this liver and spleen and he was on the transplant list within a very short period of time and that would have been missed if we weren't doing screening. Screening is really important because people don't think about these things they don't look for things unless they're told to look for them. One of the advantages of doing skin checks is I look for different things to what a lay person might look for. If you haven't got a connection, if you haven't got a relationship with someone, they're less likely to be interested in what you have to say. In providing ongoing care in a community, you can make that connection and you can make a positive change with their healthcare. The tyranny of distance is huge. Even to get to these little clinics, people might drive two hours to get here. Take it away, their health is going to suffer. Each town is totally different from the next. Sometimes I'll meet the mothers during their pregnancy, see them through their whole pregnancy and then continue on with them. So I have particular families that I'd seen them through their whole pregnancy and then get to see the kids grow up too. So you just, you become part of their family and it's, it's really nice and, you, and because the women know you that well, they'll tell you what's really going on, which sometimes takes a long time. This is my first pregnancy. I'm happy, but I'm a bit nervous at the same time. Every time I see the doctor and everything, and it takes my stress and nerves away. So just, just check if 
Bub's happy and everything's all right and it's going good. The nurses and the doctors and everything will love while we are. They have very big personalities. Little Miss Emily over here, she's definitely the talker. She chats all day long. Chloe here is a very big wriggle worm. When they were born at 29 weeks in our local Gladstone Hospital, they were flowing within hours of their birth down to the NICU in the Royal Women's Hospital. They were in the isolate, which they shared together. They were one at each end. They were just about, just a bit bigger than the size of our hands. It's very different to have a premature child compared to a normal full-term child. The girls were in critical condition on their way down. They would have had to get to Brisbane one way or another, but being able to do it by the flying doctors so quickly meant that they got the best medical care they could. They make you feel very calm the whole time. If we couldn't have gotten to Brisbane when we did, they really wouldn't be here today. I got my first cuddle on Christmas Day from the both of them. I think it was just a just very big relief to be able to see them and hear that for their condition, for their age, that they were doing really well. I, I don't even remember what it was like without the twins anymore. <laughs> The RFDS Dental Service, we travel around to remote communities throughout central western Queensland, delivering a much needed dental service to people who generally have a limited access to dental care. We provide a range of different dental services, anywhere from preventive dental services all the way through to restorative and oral surgery. People often haven't been to the dentist for a very long time, poor oral health is associated with a number of systemic issues. Not only are we helping improve people's oral health, but we're showing that the Royal Flying Doctors isn't just an aeromedical retrieval service, but they're here to improve people's well-being. Predominantly, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one counselling. The modality I will use will depend very much on the person in front of me. People need this service because it saves lives. The thing about primary health care is that you can't measure what you prevent. And the sad truth is I pretty much have discussions about suicidal ideation most days. A story that stands out for me was there was a station hand that came in and he had had plans to take his own life. We worked pretty hard over four sessions to bring some perspective to his thoughts and to help him work through his own grief and his own issues. He was already judging himself and he was so mindful of everybody else potentially judging him that he hadn't felt that he could open up. So to have that safe environment where he could talk about where he was at really, how he was feeling really, and in the end he said something beautiful to me that actually makes me feel quite emotional. He said, um, he said, I, I have to live two lives now and I have to make my life count and I'm going to. Human beings are social beings and we are wired for connection. And when you step into that space with somebody, you create brain change. Thank you.